Hi, it's Bobby from Breaking Code, and today I'm going to show you a video on Texture Packer and how this can help with your games using Cocos 2D or uh, various other frameworks. And uh, just get right into it. I'll start off by showing why you would use this, what the advantage is. So going into my game here, let's just run it. And um, this is a very simple game. And uh, actually, let me pause it here. So, and this artwork isn't final, but I just put in some placeholder artwork. And I just want to bring your attention down here. It's kind of hard to see because the, because the crowd is there. But you could turn this on uh, as you're developing and show you here. It has a, a draw count. So if you look at this number here, it has 17 as the draw count. So right now, in this, in this page, it has had to draw 17 different times. So just looking real quick, we have a clown, we have a chainsaw, we have a zombie spawning. Um, each of these crowd sections, and even uh, these here are additional pieces, uh, each of these, which is cotton candies and tickets. So everything on the screen is pretty much drawn separately. Now, the disadvantage to doing it that way is it's going to uh, cause your, your processor or GPU or very low-level stuff that I'm completely not keen on. Uh, but I know that it has to draw each of these individually instead of in one batch. So the advantage of using a, a sprite sheet is that it could just draw it in one and drop that that draw count from 17 to, say, two. Maybe just a background and then one draw batch where it draws everything in one swoop, which helps with performance. So that's why we're doing it, and let's just show how this works. So uh, right now I actually am using, or I, I have an old... Um, uh, texture atlas and this is the one I'm using now but it doesn't have everything this has uh, the zombie animations it has uh, the player clown it has a chainsaw but that's it uh, since then I've added a number of other things so I want to add these to the texture atlas for instance uh, there's gonna be a little pop for balloons that come through and uh, I already have that animation in here you see, we go to my animations, and then this is the balloon pop animation. It kind of looks like that. And uh, so I'd like to put that and a number of other different images in the uh, in the texture atlas. So let's go do that. So go over to texture atlas here, and uh, let's just open up that one I already had. Okay. So this is this is the texture atlas that you just saw over here. But let me show you a difference. So here is what I already have. And then when I opened it up, you'll notice that these balloon pops, the animations are already in there. Now the reason that they're in there is I never added that. What it actually did was, if you look over here, it has my animations folder uh, in here because when I dragged all these animations in, I just dragged this whole folder. And right when I opened it up, it went and checked to see if there's anything new in there, and it did. It, it's this balloon pop animation, it put that in. So I don't even have to do anything. So that's a nice little feature of Texture Packer. Now you see here there's a lot of settings. Um, you choose a type of data file. I'm using a, a plist and a uh, texture format. I'm using PNG, which is probably the simplest, but might not be the best performance. Uh, I see a lot of people like to use pvr.ccz, uh, but for now I'm just going to use the PNG. Um, and then there's a bunch of other features here. And let's say, for instance, this image format. Uh, RGBA888 is the highest, and I'm, I'm sort of using a, a little lower quality with the 444. Uh, and if these all seem confusing, one really cool thing about this program is you hover the mouse over, and it'll just tell you exactly what, what you're looking at, what these different settings are. So it gives you a good sort of point to understand. Uh, another popular one is this RGB565, and what that does is you see it turn black, is it ignores the alpha channel. So that's one less bit it needs to worry about. And this isn't good for most of your animations or anything like that because most of them have some, some blank space around them. And this ignores blank space and I guess turns it black, which isn't good. The, the one, Something it is really good for is for background images where there is no transparent space. So uh, it saves some memory there and uh, improves your performance. So let's just put this back. Uh, another cool thing that this does is it sort of packs them together. See, for instance, this little head coming out of the ground, this this file is actually much bigger. It's about that big. It's as tall as the regular zombies. And uh, But what it does is it just kind of packs these all in together and uh, ignores the transparent 
space and it just sort of puts it back in there later when you need it. Uh, there's a couple other features here like dithering which helps um, when you reduce the quality it helps the quality look better and saves you some space so there's a whole bunch of settings you can do a maximum size. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, some more files here that I need. Let's do, let's bring the balloons in and you see it just popped it right in there. Uh, let's see what else we need. We need cotton candy. Let's put the small cotton candy in there. There it is. And you can also see it's moving. The, the stars were down here, but then we put in the cotton candy and the balloons in it. It's moving them. It's making it as tight and efficient as possible to make this whole file as small as it can uh, without losing any quality. Let's do a Facebook icon. Oh, that's no good. Let's get rid of that. That was supposed to be Facebook icon small. There we go, that's better. Now the quality there does look worse. Let me see. Yeah, see? And I don't know if, I'm gonna experiment and see if, uh, you can see it looks a little fuzzier. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try it with both ways. Maybe I'll export it as both and see if uh, this dithering helps out and uh, makes makes it look better. Then maybe I'll change it back to the 4444. Uh, let's see what else we want. We want the popcorn machine. Yep, get bigger and we'll do the lever. And definitely need the ticket. Let's get the Twitter icon in there. Again, I'm supposed to do the small Twitter icon. Let's change that. Uh, Twitter icon small. And I just realized I had people jumping into the video back there, so pay no attention to them. Um, let's see, what else are we gonna add? Twitter, let's do, I think that's it from here. We might as well throw in, uh, yeah, let's throw in this crowd piece here. Okay, so now it's getting a little bit bigger. Let's see. So this would be the whole texture atlas here. And at some point it got too big and it's starting to waste a lot of space. So at this point, I don't need all, all this. I would want to put more, more things in there. So I'm going to take some away just to try to make this a little smaller. I like it would affect it that much, but it's just kind of bothering me how much blank space is in here. So let's try to get rid of this. Yeah, and that did it. So uh, we can just add that later, or we just had that separate. That doesn't necessarily have to be a part of this. And I, I use that popcorn machine for a very small period of time. So let's, what we're going to do is publish this. And it's, everything's okay. And there we go. Let's see. Should have put that right there. So now, and this should now be updated. Yep, balloon pop. Okay. Now, one thing I just noticed um, the names of these. Uh, so, if you have a subfolder like here, I have balloon pop. Um, Normally, you would when you're doing your code, you would just use this as the file name. But if you have it in a subfolder, you have to uh, you have to actually put the subfolder name. So it's say attacking slash clown blah 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 balloon pop slash balloon pop dot png. So that's just something to keep in mind. I, I'm not sure if there's a way to turn that off. I don't particularly like that feature, although I do see how it would be good for organizing possibly. Um, it, it's kind of more typing. What I want to do is. Go into my file. I'm just going to delete these and then drag them back in. There we go. Bring them in. And there we go. So now all these are in here. So now what I have to do is go back through my code because. I was just doing it the, uh, the sort of manual way without using uh, the texture atlas. So here, so for instance, and balloon sprite equals CC sprite, sprite. Now instead of sprite with file, which is sort of just the manual way to do it, I'm going to go down to sprite with sprite frame name. And then we're just going to name it balloons.png. 
PNG, and I don't believe that was in a subfolder, so I don't have to put any subfolder name. But if uh, if it wasn't a subfolder, it would be you know something like balloons slash balloons. But we'll leave it like that and comment that out and just clean it up, delete it later. Now if you're going to add this in a sprite batch node, of course you'd have to, instead of self, change that to the name of the sprite batch node. But yeah, that's about it. It's super simple to make. Uh, it's a very user-friendly program. It knows what you want to do, pretty much, and it's got a lot of customization that I haven't even played with, but uh, the basic thing to remember is it makes your file smaller, it makes it faster, more efficient, and uh, with mobile devices that's particularly important because you don't want it slowing down. So I definitely recommend using Texture Packer. Um, you could just do a search, Texture Packer, or I think it's on codeandweb.com slash Texture Packer. Just do a Google search, you'll find it. Uh, I think they have uh, a trial or uh, it might be free for certain you know, with uh, limited settings. But uh, definitely check it out. And uh, if you like it or if you have any questions, let me know.